Hey, Shalom Israel, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rekah Kwadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutations to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. And the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever we go. Shalom, brothers and sisters, Shalom. Uh, this epistle is entitled uh, Either uh, Just uh, Simply salvation or double down on hope it's, you know initially it was double down on hope uh, the other day we made an epistle here let me see if I can bring it up real quick this epistle here was uh, response oh yeah it was just uh, the day before yesterday response our only hope you know our only hope is Yahweh Shai right uh, and in that in this epistle I believe I was speaking about you know, I brought up a few Give all different to uh, topics. Let me see. Uh, one of them was some Jake. Where, where, where the picture at? Some goddamn, some damn unbeliever. Uh, where is he at? Somewhere around here. Yeah, this this Christian unbeliever, you know, coming against the word of truth, of course. But, you know, that's not what we, you know, that's not we. That's, you know, man, we don't, you know, that's that's why the scripture tells us. Um, let's go get it. Worry not about them that's going to perish. And when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Let me see if I can go get it real quick. Inquire not how the, you know, how they're gonna, how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Because when we speak about salvation, okay, here we go. When we speak about salvation, we're gonna go to the book of Second Ezra real quick, just to get, you know, get to bring it out, being washed and clean and baptized with this word of truth. When we speak about salvation, man. Um, we're gonna get it in. We're gonna go get this this definition. But here we go. So Second Ezra chapter nine verse thirteen. And therefore be not thou be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Who the world is and whom the world is created. Right. See. See. Now we're talking about salvation. We're talking about. Uh, ever, everlasting rulership We're talking about a brand new kingdom over here We're talking about the kingdom of heaven uh, Isaiah chapter 45 Verse 17 Okay They may not be able to see it and understand it But we do Because the Lord has blessed us with this truth Okay But Israel shall be saved We're talking about the whole house of Israel And you know the spirit that put a, You know the Lord You have a Put the spirit on us To bring out this epistle the other day About how uh, The two thirds are going to come back Through the nutsack Of the one And of the 144 Hopefully elect And one third of Israel But Israel All Israel The so called Negro, Hispanic And Native American Indians Shall be saved In the Lord In Yahweh Shema Shah With an everlasting salvation We're talking about The uh, the kingdom of heaven Being established You know And it's, it's It will never be diminished Ye shall not be ashamed Nor confounded World without end Okay World without end Um And just, you know, the spirit. I want, man. Look, we got to go find this scripture real quick, too. Bear with me, bro. So lucky, man. Because uh, this scripture been coming up in my in my mind for a few days now. We're going to go get it. We're going to go get it. This is in the book of Daniel. Uh, Okay. Lord willing not, this is the right one. Yeah, this is it. This is it. All praise to you, Habashim Uh So where is it though? I'm gonna I'm gonna read it and then we're gonna find the uh it says, and in those days these kings shall be and in in and in the days of these kings, okay, and that's what's going on right now. You know, uh Shall the God, Yahweh Shemashah of heaven, set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever, bro. We're talking about, you know, right now, the house of David, you know, that third temple is being raised up. Now, where is this? Okay, that was that was Daniel chapter two verse forty four, brothers and sisters. You know, just to, for reference, so you understand. And in those days, let me read it one more time. We're gonna move on. And in the days of these kings, shall the shall God Yahweh Shemashai of heaven set up a kingdom, 
which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdoms and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Okay, man. So look, when we came when we came out here, you had to fight for this epistle too, man. When we came out here, we said the prayer. Um. And we began to meditate on the, on the word, you know, meditate on the doubling down on hope, you know, uh, thinking about the unbelievers and how they, they don't have any hope. They they think this place is going to go on forever. They think it's going to go on forever like this. You know, we're, uh, you know, because we're out here proclaiming this word of truth to the so-called Negro, Hispanic and Native American Indians, telling y'all that we are the Lord's chosen people. This is big, telling you that we've been lied to, telling you that the Bible actually means something totally different than you know than we what we've been taught in these line ass churches and stuff that we you know the lord is going to come back and he's actually going to deliver us out of the hands of our enemies let's get this scripture let's go get the scripture real quick uh i'm gonna bring it up on the phone so we can all see it together uh in the book of um luke chapter 168 that's why i'm doing this on this i like this i don't i like this app man i had to I was really meditating about going live and everything. And I'm trying to weigh the pros and the cons. About I'm gonna I'm gonna use that uh, Lord willing I'll be using that that um, Streamyard again this week. You know, use trying to use all the tools that the Lord has given us, man. This is the book of Luke chapter 168. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for He have visited and redeemed His people. Right. Once again, the scriptures. You know, in the last days, these these words of truth have been. Proclaimed on the, on the four corners of the earth This gospel shall be preached And then the end shall come You know this this new song That nobody's ever heard before You know uh, Breaking uh, breaking down all these strongholds Right That's when the Lord is saying Hey His people He's talking about the so called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians that, 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 that His chosen people man Above all these other nations Through the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and what they did with this Christianity and all these dumb, false doctrines and false religions, trying trying to say that uh, everybody's involved in this in this salvation, but it's not it's not the case. And we're gonna when we read the we, when we read the definition, we're about to go get it right now, okay? And then we're gonna come back to the epistle. Uh, when we read that, you're gonna see every now and then they try to ease, you know, with that replacement theology, they try to ease it into there, but it just don't fit, bro. It always snaps right back, just like a rubber band, snaps back into place. Talking about the children of Israel only, right? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people. Okay, prophets have been fulfilled and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As as he spoke, as he spoke by the mouth of his pro holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Okay, you know, speaking saying before that we we right now everybody else should be saved right what from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us okay to perform the mercy promise to our fathers and to redeem and remember his holy covenant bro the oath which he swore to our father abraham okay that he would grant unto us that we been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear bro okay and that's what we're talking about around here. All praise to you. How about you, my child? Oh, shoot. I, pre I pressed the wrong button. But that's okay. Now, um, where are we going to go? Okay. So, right now, we're going to go. We're just going to get into it. We're going to get that um, get that definition that we're talking about. It's pretty long, but we're going to read it. We're going to read it, and we're going to read it straight through. Then we're going to come back to the, uh, to the epistle. Lord willing, to be edifying and exhorting, bro. You know, this is the truth right here. This is it. This is it, man. That that doubling down on hope. This is that hope of salvation. So we bring this this um, this definition from the Nelson's Illustrated Bible. Okay, we're gonna go straight to it, and we're talking about the definition salvation. Okay, and what does it say when we speak about this salvation? You know, because the Christians talking about they already saved, right? False doctrine. They already saved, bro. They can do what the hell they want. The law is done away with. You know, who, who, hey, who, who, who knows? You know, that's how they go. Because it's a false doctrine, man. Because, you know, how about Shema Shah said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And we're talking about the laws of life to the children of Israel. That were The laws were given to the children of Israel when they made the covenant with Yahweh about Shema Shah. And then when they stood in front of Moses. So this is salvation we're reading right here. Salvation, deliverance from the power of sin, redemption. Now we understand that the wages of sin equals death. So if you are delivered from the power of sin, 
you know we're gonna get it we're gonna get it later on we might as well get it now uh let's go to book of jeremiah see you see it we're gonna go to book of jeremiah so maybe we'll incorporate the uh the definition as we read it with the epistle okay that makes a lot that makes a lot more sense oh shoot jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33 okay Hold on, let's... Oh, shit, man. 31. Let's start at... Let's start at 30. Jeremiah 31, 30. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Before the days come, said the Lord, how about Shemashai? Right, so now, you know, we are, uh, Lord willing, being covered by the blood of the Lamb because why we... We're, uh, because we believe in the Lord We repented of our sins That's why he came and died for the children of Israel He said, at least you repent, you shall all likewise perish Right? That's why these warnings are going out to the children of Israel Telling you to believe in the one true living God Telling you that we've been lied to You so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians They had you worshiping a false god and a false idol They got you calling on another name So you really don't believe You don't even know the Lord That's why the scripture tells you to seek the Lord while he may be found You know, get on the same page Let him, let, you know, un get this understanding that Hey, we're yet this day in our captivity We're in the hands of our enemies these other heathen nations we're not we're not like them we're not supposed to be following their ways all these things we're supposed to be holy that's what it's that's what the scripture actually is talking about bro okay we're talking about doubling down on hope you know something that we've never seen faith you know belief and something that we've never heard before we're talking about spiritual things over here we're talking about the, a, 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 a new world a new kingdom a new age being set up right before our eyes It's like we read earlier Behold the days come Said the Lord That I will make a new covenant With who? With the house of Israel So right Look bro This is only for the 144 Whole for elect and one third of Israel You're going to have a lot of Scoffers and mockers And unbelievers These Christians These other people With their own vain opinions That's going to try to that, With their replacement theology Or say whatever the hell they want Because this is a gift of faith At the end of the day You know Only a remnant shall return it's already predestinated who the Lord is going to deliver, right? Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their who? With their fathers, who stood in front of Moses and received the law, statutes, commandments. While the Egyptians were back in Egyptian licking their wounds, you know, crying and shit. All these other heathen nations were in their lands doing whatever the hell they do. But we were standing there making a covenant with Yahweh Shemashah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. But this shall be a new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, right? After this time, after, you know, and this is the time. This is we're coming around that time, bro. That's why these warnings are going out. That's why this new song has been, you know, the, Yahweh Shah is about to come back and deliver his people. Said the Lord, I will put my laws in their inward parts, okay? And that's what we were speaking about when we got that first sentence from the, from the definition of salvation. We're going to go back to it too in a minute. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, okay? After those days, said the Lord, Yahweh Shah, Shah, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write in it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Okay? And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. Right. We're not going to consent. We're not going to say, hey, seek the Lord while he may, he may be found. Come. This is the Lord. We've been lied to. We're not going to have to say that. Because why? And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said Yahweh For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. Okay? All right. Now, we want to go over here real quick to the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. Well, let's start at 51. Behold, I will show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Right. 
but we shall all be changed. We're not we're not all gonna die, you know. The Lord said there's gonna be some standing here that would never taste a death. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall arise, be arisen, be rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Right? The Lord said he's gonna put his laws in their inward parts, he's gonna give us these brand new bodies for that everlasting kingdom, right? For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This is for the children of Israel, the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians. So when this corrupt, so this when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written: Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be Yahweh Shemashai, which given us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shai. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh Shemashai, for, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord Yahweh Shemashai. Right. Oh, man. Ain't that beautiful, bro? So did you... Did you understand? Did you see what we were just reading? It was speaking about, you know, the, all those scriptures just came together. Uh, you know, the wage of sin is death. But Yahweh Shema Shah said, I'm going to make a new covenant with them in, in, the, in those days. You know, in the days of these kings, the Lord's going to set up a new kingdom. And, you know, it's never going to be diminished or given to another people. It's going to be an everlasting rulership. And the Lord's going to bless us with these with these spiritual, you know, um, how, do you, how did the brother say? Enter is... Uh, uh, extraterrestrial so to speak bodies man you know um put the laws in the inward parts we're gonna be changed as we, as we just read bro we're gonna be changed bro come on let's go back to salvation let's go back to that definition uh oh i think i was supposed to go here okay and here it is right here salvation deliverance from the power of sin redemption right hey did y'all y'all just read it we, we all read it together we all read it together. And also the scripture speaks about, you know, at that time, the heathen who, who we're going to be ruling over, you know, after that, out, after the thousand years, all the dust has settled and everything. Esau has been eradicated off the earth. The heathen going to come down. We're going to start. We're going to teach them the laws of Yahweh Shem bro. You know, uh, we're going to get to that a little bit later. Look, salvation, deliverance from the power of sin, redemption. In the Old Testament, the word salvation sometimes refers to deliverance from danger, right? Deliverance from the weak, deliverance of the weak, which is us right now, from an oppressor who is which Esau Edom, the Caucasian race. We're in the hands of our enemies, right? We're yet this day in our captivity. And deliverance from blood, gut, and guilt from Salaki, and deliverance from blood, guilt, and its consequences. It may also refer to national deliverance from military threat, right? Once again, Esau Edom and this. This agenda that they got planned to try to put the M.A.R.K. In, inside your hand and make you a perpetual slave, you know, uh, concentration camps, famine of food, you know, to make you bow down to the beast. All these things right here. This, this is what salvation is talking about. OK, deliverance from military threat or release from captivity. Right. We're yet this day in our captivity. The Lord, how about you? I said no man shall deliver you. No man's going to redeem you. OK, but this we're talking about salvation over here. We're talking about being delivered from this. Deliverance from military threat or release from captivity. But salvation finds its deepest meaning in the spiritual realm of life. Our universal need for salvation is one of the clearest teachings of the Bible. Okay, for the need. Oh, I don't think I can go up. No. For the need of salvation goes back to the removal of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. After the fall, the lives of the people were marked by strife and difficulty. Uh, increasingly, corruption and violence dominated their world. When Yahweh Shemashi destroyed the world of the flood with the flood, he also performed the first act of salvation by saving Noah and his family. These eight people became basis of another chance for mankind. The salvation of Noah and his family was viewed by the Apostle Peter as a pattern of the full salvation we receive. In Yahweh Shai. Right? You know, there's some scriptures speaking about that. 
uh, you know, as as the days of Noah were, you know, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. So while everybody's partying and having a good time, we're speaking about this salvation right now. We're speaking about, hey, come, seek the Lord, repent to the Lord. You know, once again, how about Shema Shai say, least you repent, you shall all likewise perish because the, the grace, the doors of mercy are open, you know, for y'all to walk into. And Lord, if, if it be your lot to get on this ark, this spiritual ark to, you know, the third temple is being tilt, built right now. You know, to turn away from this wicked ass world, all the philosophies and doctrines of Babylon the Great, aka America, that's been screwed all, the, all over the place. You know, uh, the brothers were just speaking about, um, the brother Vega sit down just made an epistle about, uh, an apostle Tahar uh, uh, made, a, made mention of it too, that he made an epistle about it too, about, uh, I think it was, what, is it Iran? Where the women are taking off their jihabs and, and marching up and down the damn street and shit, following the ways of the damn heathen, okay? Because their philosophies and their doctrine, their Babylon juice is spreading all over the place, have destroying people's customs and their traditions, you know, uh, and bringing down the morality, bro. Because they're they're the devil that the Bible speaks of, you know. Their ways equal death, and 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 destruction, you know. Come on, but the Lord's talking about delivering us out of the hands of all that. Let's see, where were we? Uh, okay, so let's say the central, the central Old Testament experience of salvation. Is the Exodus okay? Yeah, right here. The central, the second paragraph, the central Old Testament experience of salvation is the Exodus. Much of Israel's worship of Yahweh Shemashi was a renewal of this mighty experience that brought them from tyranny in Egypt to freedom in the Promised Land. The mighty salvation, the mighty saving power of Yahweh Shemashi was demonstrated dramatically as the Israelites formed a holy nation of priestly servants of the lord right see see how it comes gonna come always come back to israel even though they're gonna try to bleed it in and make it try to make it sound like it means everybody else but no salvation is of the jews as it should proclaim the exodus became a pattern of salvation by which yahweh shemashah's future deeds of redemption would be understood right so now we really understand you know, we understand good and evil. Like this, like description in Baruch said, you know, these plagues were not brought upon you for your destruction. You know, but now we understand. But as, but just as the Exodus symbolizes their salvation, the captivity of the Israelites in Babylon was a disastrous return to bondage. The people responded to the plight with expectations of a new and better Exodus in which Yahweh Shemashah forg would forgive their sins and restore their hearts to faithfulness, right? And what is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. Who received the law? The children of Israel that stood in front of Moses once again. And that's what we're speaking about. You know, uh, sin equals death. And the Lord said he's going to put all, put the laws in our inward parts. He's not talking about anybody else. He said the covenant that I made with their fathers, okay? So just making it plain, it's plain upon table, simple, okay? This hope for a new exodus merged with Expectations of a full realization of the rule of Yahweh Shema uh, since since God was Lord and Head. Okay, we're gonna go on over here, and it says hope. This hope for a new Exodus merged with expectation of a full realization of the rule of of God, since God was Lord and had shown Himself to be righteous and faithful. He must one day overpower his enemies and perfect the life of his people, right? This hope is expressed through the concept of the day of the Lord as described in the Old Testament. Uh, the Old Testament described in the Old Testament's prophets, Joel 2.1, Amos 9.11. But this hope also Focus on the role of the anointed king and the coming of the Messiah. Okay, yeah, we understand. How about Shemashah is going to come? He said, uh, "He that touches you, touches the apple of his eye." He said he's going to plead for all flesh, um, and we understand that the enemy is all these other damn nations, right? So you, you're trying to talk about some replacement theology, but all these nations are enemies of the Lord because they're going to be in subjection in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to get it real quick in the book of uh, Psalms, chapter eighty-three. Verse 1, keep not thy silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult. They that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Right, you see that, that 
contrast. You, they're against us. We're the we're the Lord's chosen people, and consulted with their hidden with uh, and consulted against thy hidden ones. Right? They didn't tell us that we're the chosen of Israel. You know, after the transatlantic slave trade, after we discontinued from our heritage, we had our heritage beat out of us, uh, and we thought we were running around here thinking we we're black Negroes and Hispanics. You know, we're the hidden ones. And they've, they've, they've worked so hard to keep that away from us, to keep us away from the Lord, having us worship a false God and a false idol, calling on different names, having us defile our temple by eating these crab shrimp, pork, and lobsters, promote, promoting all everything that's against the, the laws of the Lord, right? At the same time, saying that they, you know, they they down with the program, talking about how in God we trust and all that bullshit, but they, they're liars from the womb, as the stripper proclaimed, you know? They cast the words of the Lord behind us and they've taught us to, to be wicked and be anti-Messiah spirit. Even as today, you got the women out here uh, putting the women in authority over the man, you know, kick the man out of the household. Uh, all, all kind of wickedness, man. Uh, effeminate, um, promoting, all, promoting all kind of wickedness. So this is our hope, doubling down on hope that the Lord is going to come and deliver us out of all these things. OK, and th just the very fact, this mercy and this truth, that we believe this, that we see through the bullshit, the scripture speaks about, um, you know, uh, if it were possible, they deceived, they would deceive the very elect. But it's not possible, man. We understand about the coming uh, trials and tribulations up here with the with the uh, our temptation about the time of Jacob's trouble, and we are thankful for that. We're, we're thankful for this heads up, for this uh, wisdom and knowledge to be the stability of that times, you know, because that's mercy of Yahweh Shemashah to tell us, hey, we're on we're on the same page of Yahweh Shemashah. He said, fear none of those things that thou shalt suffer. He said, he's going to be with us, bro, and that is the salvation. So we're getting ready for these all these times of trouble at a hand. We understand it's a judgment for the two thirds of Israel that you know that they want they would rather stay here with their enemies instead of coming to Yahweh Shemashah, and that's why these warnings are constantly going out to the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, and at the same time, it's condemning this wicked ass world, telling you that it's the end of your kingdom. This is it. It's over. They have taken, once again, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They have consulted together with one consent, with one consent, brother, with one consent. They are confederate against the Lord. And it tells you who they are. The tabernacles of Edom, the Ishmaelites, the Moabites, and the Hagarines, the Ammon, Amalek, Philistines, the inhabitants of Tyre, you know, all these other nations, bro. All these, all the other nations. Okay? All the other nations, bro. Come on, let's go back. I think we were somewhere around number two here. And uh, let's see. Okay, we're going to start at this second paragraph here. Even Israel's return from the captivity, however, failed to fulfill all their hopes. Hagar 2 and 3. So a new understanding arose. The full realization of Yahweh Shemashah's purpose of salvation would involve the coming and completely new age, bro. The kingdom of heaven. That's what we're talking about. The kingdom, you know, his, uh, what's, that, what's that? Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. A new age, man. That's why we said this is the end of Esau's kingdom. This is the end of an age. Uh, and that's in Isaiah 65 verse 17, right? This doctrine. This doctrine, bro, this one doctrine of salvation <clears throat> reached reached its fulfillment in the death of Yahweh Shai on our behalf, on our behalf, right? As we just read in the book of <clears throat> Luke chapter 168. Let's go get that again, you know, because this is not talking about no nobody else. It's talking about the children of Israel. Luke chapter 1 verse 68. One more time, baby. Okay, blessed be the Lord God of who? Israel. For he have visited and redeemed his people. Right. No man's going to save you. No man's going to redeem you. We've got the Martin Luther Kings. We've got the Malcolm X. We've got all these other, the, uh, the damn uh, Jesse Jackson. We've got the Quefro Dollars. We've got the, all these other false prophets, all these false leaders and teachers. You know, but the Lord has raised up the children of Israel and raised up. You know, he's going to give you passes according to my, my own heart. That's going to feed you with knowledge. You know, therefore, you know, as the script proclaimed, therefore, you have has sent forth us, the apostles last, bro. OK, to, to bring this warning, to bring out this word of truth, saying that the Lord is about to come back and deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Right. He's going to redeem us. He's going to redeem us. All those other false prophets, they couldn't they didn't do nothing. 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand that hate us, bro. Okay? To perform mercies, the mercies promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, my man. It's beautiful, bro. It's beautiful, bro. And that's that doubling down on hope. That's our hope of salvation. And where were we at here? Shit. I keep losing my point, my space. Okay, right here. This com this doctrine right here. This doctrine of salvation is reached by the fulfillment in the death of Yahushua on our behalf, right? Yahushua's mission was to save the world from sin. And we we understand that this is speaking about the world of Israel. And see, I think they're gonna try to bleed it in here. Let's see. Was was to save the world from sin and the wrath of Yahweh by Shemashai. During his earthly ministry, salvation was brought to us. By his presence and the power of faith, now our salvation is based on his death and resurrection. The salvation that comes through Yahushua may be described in three uh, tense, tenses: past, present, and right. Exactly. Uh, the salvation that comes through Yahushua may be described with three tenses: past. Present and future. When people believe in Yahweh Shai, right? And once is um you know talking about when you're talking about belief, you want to go on and get it, you know, start with the name. His name is not no damn Christ. His name is not no JC. Okay? His name is Yahweh Shai. His father's name is Yahweh. So that's having faith in the in, in Yahweh Bashem Shai because the Lord spoke in Hebrew and we understand his name actually means he delivers. Okay? And this is the new song. That's that new gospel. This gospel shall be preached on the four corners of the earth. Then shall the end come. Okay. So it's based on you having faith in the in the Lord. Because when you have really actually start having real faith in the Lord, that that prompts you to turn away from this wicked world to know who your enemies are. That Esau Edom is the devil that the Bible speaks of. He does have this wicked as agenda. You know that's actually written in the scriptures. And this is the wisdom and knowledge. So you want to cleave unto the Lord right now and ask Him to deliver you out of the hands of your enemies, bro. Okay. And all of these out of this out of this these chains of darkness, this 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 flesh. Okay? And it all starts from that, that little grain of mustard seed, right? But you have to believe in the one true living God. Okay, when people believe in Yahweh Shai, right here, we right here, then they are saved. Okay? Acts chapter 16, verse 31. But we are also in process. Is there anything else? Process of being saved from the power of sin. Finally, we shall be saved from the very presence of sin. Right? And we just we we read those scriptures speaking about we should be changed. You know, the Lord's gonna put the laws in our inward parts. He's gonna make a covenant, you know, just like he did with our forefathers, our forefathers, the ones that were under the cloud, right? The ones, you know, that stood in front of Moses. Not all people on the planet Earth, bro. Just wanna keep beating that down, breaking down those strongholds. Yeah, how about Shemasha releases into our lives? Today, the power of Yahweh Shai's resurrection and allows us to foretaste of our future life as his children, our experience of salvation. Okay. Is that it? Okay, good. We, we did it. Will be complete when Yahweh Shai returns and the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Shai is fulfilled. Right. And I want to, you know, um, because they said that. I want to make sure I go get the scripture uh, when it speaks about the Lord's going to send forth his angels to gather his elect and uh, then come at the end. You know, just want to make sure we beat that, make, meet that home. Send forth his angels. Because that's all a part of uh, this, this definition of salvation, you know. Uh, it goes hand in hand. It's in the book of Matthew. Uh, because uh, the things that, unless the evil be not turned upside down, the evil that song cannot be turned upside down, then then the kingdom, you know, cannot come, bro. So it's going to have to be destruction and war. It's talking about the, the devil being cast, that dragon being cast out of, out of heaven. And who's in heaven right now? Esau, Eden, the Caucasian race. You know, they're being cast out of heaven. This is their, this is their rulership right now. Uh, wait a minute. Let's see. 
Let's go. Let's start at verse 29. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulations of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall be shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We, we talk about nuclear destruction on Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. And as those nuclear warheads have been shot over here to destroy this place, the chariots, the so-called UFOs of the Lord is going to come swoop in and what? They're going to gather up the children, the, the elect, the 144 hopeful elect and one third of Israel, the servants of the Lord. You know, and the Lord throughout all that time of Jacob's trouble and stuff, the Lord said, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to guide you over here. I'm going to lead you away from here. I'm going to feed you. You know, of course, the scripture tells us that some of us are going to be beheaded for the for the word of the Lord. The scripture tells us that, you know, someone's going to be cast into prison. It's, it's, it's through much tribulation we shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to be easy. All right. But we're going to have faith, you know, Lord willing, through all of that, believing in his word right now. And then shall appear the sun, the sign of the son of man in heaven. And, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, right? All these other nations are going to be crying and shit because their shit is done. They're about to go into captivity. The Lord is coming back, you know, with, 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 with great anger, bro, to plead to judge all flesh. You blaspheme the name of the Lord. You done took, you done took the children of Israel and had, had them in subjection at the bottom of your feet all this time, lying to them, treating them like shit. You know, fucking up, you know, talking about how much you love the Lord, but you're throwing the, the, the laws behind your back, destroying the earth with Esau, Edom, you know, mis mishandling the nations, the people. You know what I'm saying? What you think going to happen? Huh? You oppressing the people just like Esau, all these other damn nations, wandering after the beast. You know, it's ridiculous. You 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 sitting big, you sitting rich, you sitting fat, you you all you you you, you living high high on the damn hog over here. You hit you living high on the hog, damn trillions of dollars and shit, millions of dollars, and this man over here barely fucking eating food, putting food on the table and stuff, and you still taxing the shit out of his ass. What you think gonna happen? The Lord come come back and fuck this shit up, bro. That's salvation over here, okay? Come on, let's go back to Matthew chapter twenty four verse thirty, and then shall appear the sign of the sun. Of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn that's right weep and cry you rich man and and they shall see the son of, of Yahweh Shemashah coming in the clouds of heaven with the power with power and great glory right the, all the angels all the chariots all the so called UFOs is gonna be beautiful bro to us we're gonna be we're gonna be loving it because that's those are the chariot the vehicles of our salvation man we're gonna be jumping up and down and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And right, like, like we just read earlier, that the last trump, you know, with the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. Going to be beamed up in those chariots and be changed, bro. And shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, that's man. All praise to you. How about Shema Shai, bro? I want to get one more scripture real quick before we move on. Uh, okay. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 24. And I want to get one more. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're gonna go first. We're gonna go before we get that that um, that other scripture, that First Corinthians. We're gonna get uh, Second Ezra, Second Ezra chapter four, verse twenty-nine. That evil, if the evil has not been sown, it says, "If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that." Is sown with good, right? So you know uh, this place is the earth is given into the hand of the wicked right now. Now the devil has to be cast out of heaven. His kingdom, you know, got to be revoked from his ass, okay? And everything's got to be turned right side up with that, uh, with that, uh, with that righteous kingdom, you know. Uh, bleeding into First Peter chapter three verse eleven, you know, uh, we're looking for a new kingdom where dwelleth righteousness. So we're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 24 here. It says, Then cometh the end, 
the end of their world, the end of their age, the end of their kingdom. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Yahweh Shemashai, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Okay? Okay? Look, he must reign. He's going to put all these other enemies under his feet, right? We just read who those enemies were. Um... Uh, in the book of Psalms chapter 83 For he had put all things under his feet But when he said All things are put under him It is manifest that he is That he ex Manifest that he is accepted Which did put all things under him Right And when all things shall be Subdued un uh, unto him Then shall the son also himself Be subject unto him That put all things under him that Yahweh may be in all in all. Okay? It's gonna be beautiful, man. That's why, you know, we're speaking about all the other nations, you know, after all the dust settle, they're all gonna come and learn the law of Yahweh Shemashah. It's gonna be an everlasting kingdom that's ran in righteousness, you know? Now we wanna go get a few scriptures here and we're gonna start to close it down, okay, brothers and sisters. Uh what well, I don't know what the hell that is. Uh we're gonna get Makai. Makai chapter 7 verse 1 How miserable am I? This is in the NLT how miserable, how miserable am I? I feel like the fruit picker after the harvest Who can find nothing to eat Not a cluster of grapes or a single early fig Can be found to satisfy my hunger The godly people have all disappeared Disappeared Not one honest person is left on the earth They are all murderers setting traps even for even for their own brothers. Both their hands. You know because right now the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. All these Israelites are under the vibration of the, the Esau Edom. The, the, the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's why the scriptures say you of your father the devil. You know none calleth for justice. But the Lord has blessed us with this truth. To tell, you know show us the path. Giving us a path according to his own heart. That's going to feed us with knowledge. Giving us his Holy Spirit. You know giving us his hope for salvation. To turn away from this wicked ass world. And start doing things that please him bro. But their hands are are equally that's why you got a lot of people coming up against the truth coming against they they want to hold hands with the heat they want to continue doing their wickedness you know they love that wickedness both their hands are equally skilled at doing evil o officials and judges alike demand bribes the people are with influence get what they want <clears throat> and together they they skim to twist it uh, twist it just even the best of them is like a briar and and the most honest is a dangerous is as dangerous as a hedge of thorns but your judgment day is coming swiftly now your your time is your time as punishment is here a time of uh, confusion right and you know esau uh, running the whole damn show turning every damn thing upside down like we just read man you know the damn wow man you know um changing these new like uh El elder malcolm always speaks about the the new speech how if they don't like a law, they just change it up, you know, uh, all the way from abortions to uh, broken homes uh, to child children being able to change their kind. All kind of just, man, it's wickedness. Uh, don't call the those, you know, the ones we used to look down upon saying that, you know, they like to lay down with with babies and stuff. Hey, that's fine. Now call them people that that like to. To uh, be with young people or something, you know, just trying to make it sound better. This this is this is place is is corrupt, you know. And we're bringing out this hundred percent truth. What the what the scriptures say? Uh, he that depart from evil, making himself a prey, right? It says even the best of them is is like a briar. The most honest is a dangerous is as dangerous as a hedge of thorns. But your judgment day is coming swiftly now. Your time of punishment is here. A time of destruction. A salaki is time of confusion. Don't trust anyone. Not your best friend or even your wives. Right. The Lord say, you know, what the scripture say? Who's my mother, my brother, my sister? Those that do the will of the Lord. Yahweh Shemasha. You know, he said uh, he, he didn't come to bring peace on earth, but a sword. You know, you're going to be the, the father going to be against the mother. The mother against the father. The daughter against the mother. The son against the father. And, you know, on and on and on. Um, roughly paraphrasing It says don't trust anyone Not your best friend or even your wife 
For the son despises the fathers, and the daughter defies her mother. The daughter-in-law defies her mother-in-law. Your enemies are right in your own household, right? As for me, I look to the Lord for help. And here we're, gonna, we're about to get to the point now. I look to, for the Lord for help. I wait confidently for you. How about Shema Shah to what? Salvation. To save me. And my God to certainly hear me. Do not gloat over me. For Do not gloat over me, my enemies. For though I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Here's the, here's the point right here. I, I will be patient as the Lord punished me. And this, you know, in the NLT and in the K, KJV, it says, um, I, will, I will bear the indignation of Yahweh Shema Shai. You know, we can get it real quick if you want. It says, I will be patient as the Lord punish me, for I have sinned against him. But after that, he will take up my case and give me justice for all I have suffered from my enemies. The Lord will bring me into the light and I will see his righteousness, bro. And that's what's happening to us right now. Being clean and washed, baptized with this word of truth, being conformed to the image of his son, Lord willing. Then my enemies will see that the Lord is on my side. They will be ashamed that they taunted me saying, so where is the Lord, that God of yours? With my own eyes, I will see their downfall. They will be trampled like mud in the streets. Okay. In that day, Israel, your cities will be rebuilt and your borders will be exalted, extended, right? People from many lands will come and honor you from Assyria all the way to the towns of Egypt, from Egypt all the way to the Euphrates River, and from the distant seas and mountains, bro. But the land will become empty and desolate because of the wickedness of those who live there. Uh, and we're going to go from here. See, uh, you know, once again, you know, I'm so thankful for this. For this truth man you know and for this epistle as well for the spirit to do it that hope is salvation doubling down on hope bro okay come on let's go back let's go ahead and start closing it out man i want to go to the book of isaiah chapter 1 verse 7 okay wait let's start at 2 here oh here oh here oh heavens and give Ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth its owner, and the ass is master crib. But Israel does not know, my people does not consider. Right, you know, hey, this is only for the 144 elect. We understand that Yahweh Shemashah has blinded the minds of them that believe not, you know, through, you know, different means. He's got the angels blinding some, you know, the, uh, they just can't get it. You know, the gods of this world. Ah, sinful nation, the people laden with iniquity, seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will, you will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and petrified sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Right, your country is desolate. This is the point I want to make. So you, you know, the Lord's got to, you know, you got to come back through the nutsack of the one, the one third, the one hundred and forty-four. Hopefully, like the one third of Israel. You know, all this stuff. You, you know, what you're hearing, we're telling you, but you see not, you understand not. We're telling you that we're the children of Israel. These these gutter rats that stole our land and they stole our heritage, and now they're taking, they're blaspheming the name of the Lord. You know, and this is not the end all be all. We're talking about a new age is about to happen, a new kingdom is being established right before your very eyes you know just hold on be patient be thankful because your salvation is nearer than you believe brothers and sisters your country is desolate your cities are burned with fire and your land strangers devoured in your presence and it is desolate and is overthrown by strangers the daughter of zion is left as a cottage in the vineyard and as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers as a besieged city and this is the point we want to make right here bro Except the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, the Lord of hosts, have left us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah, right? Right, man. If the Lord has not, you know, put that spirit in us to return to him, to believe his word of truth, we would have been like Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah, bro. Also, uh, hey, always give thanks to Yahweh Shemashah for this truth, for this understanding. Right? And uh, going back to doubling down on hope. That the Lord's going to deliver us out of our hands of our, our enemies. If you just look around in the reality of things. 
as for my people, children are their oppressors. Right? When the hand of Esau eat them, the devil that the Bible speaks of, who's not fit to rule. You know, he's fucking up, fucking up shit. You know, uh, talking about giving you some, trying to, you know, uh, put this thing inside you so he can track your ass, uh, make you bow down to his will. And if you don't do what he say, he's going to punish you by taking, you know, cutting you off from doing certain things. You know, it's right right here at the door, bro. You know, the, stri- the scripture speaks about um, if the Lord hadn't shortened those days, there'd be no flesh left to be saved. And that's how wicked and evil this man is. Right. It says, for as my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of, of the path. OK. But that's why the Lord said, you know, that's why the scripture is sounding off in my head. Therefore, the Lord, Yahweh Shema Shai, sent us the, prof- the, the apostles last. Let me go get that scripture real quick. Uh, okay, it's in the book of 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter four verse nine. For I think that Yahweh Shemasha has sent forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels and to men. We are fools for the Lord's sake, Yahweh Shemasha's sake. But we are wise, but ye are wise in Yahweh. We are weak, but ye are strong, but uh, ye are honorable, but we are despised. Okay? Yeah, you know, but that's okay, you know, because we understand the, the prophecy that the Lord is going to, you know, they're going to come back and he's going to deliver us. And, you know, they, these other Israelites out here, they're going to be ashamed. They're going to be ashamed because they wandered after the beast. You know, they're going to bow down to the slaughter. They're going to trust in oppression. We're going to the book of Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha, chapter 10, verse 4. This is the. This is the will of the Lord. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. Right. You know, he's already declared the end from the beginning. So all we have to do is hold on to this truth, brothers and sisters, and believe this word. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, uh, verse 29. For he that had brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your what? Salvation. <laughs> he will bring you everlasting joy with your salvation, bro. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem. For he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee, okay, and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thou children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting long to endure, and she shall be inhabitants of devils for a great time. Right. We're reading the destruction of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. We're reading the salvation of, of, the, of the Israelites, bro. The 144 elect and one-third of Israel. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee. From Yahweh by Shema Shai. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that time. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right now, we're free in the mind. And the Lord's going to come and deliver our, our bodies out of this captivity. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of Yahweh by Shema Shai. Right, and I read this scripture a lot because it's speaking about being gathered together by the word. One, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, man. One belief. You know, and we're going to end it off on Acts. Chapter 5, verse 30, bro. Let's start at 29. Then Peter and the other apostles said, answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. For the God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hang on a tree. Him have Yahweh Shemash exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of sins, baby. Okay? Forgiveness of sins. So, you know, 
I want to quote that Proverbs, roughly paraphrasing, 3 verse 5, let not mercy and truth forsake thee, man. This is that time to repent, you so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, because your salvation is nearer than you believe. So hopefully this was edifying and exhorting. I know I, I really enjoyed it, bro. I didn't know it was going to be like that at all, man. So all praises to Yahweh Shema for that, for that, man. So with that, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem Rekakwinash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutations to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. And the one-third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the Lamb where we go. Shalom, Israel. Shalom, brothers and sisters.